You're listening to the Pro Organizer Studio podcast with Melissa Klug and Jen Obermeyer. Thank you so much for joining in. Our mission is to broaden the horizons of savvy business women in the organizing industry by instilling confidence and inspiring authenticity. You'll gain new insight into strategies designed specifically for professional organizers. So now let's get started. Hey, Pro Organizers, it's Melissa, and we are back this week with part two of my conversation with Kim Snodgrass of Rustic Home Organizing. Kim started her business a little over a year ago. We interviewed her on the podcast in January of 2022, and she is back with us to tell us what she learned in her first full year of organizing. If you missed her original episode, it's episode 97, and then last week was her first part, so please listen to all of it. She has so, so much wisdom share and I love talking to her because she is very, very honest, which I think is important, especially for newer organizers to know. And even if you're not a newer organizer, Kim has a lot of great things. I learned things from Kim and I am very grateful that she is in our inspired organizer community and I get to work with her. So here you go with part two of my conversation with Kim. I hope you have an awesome day. What have you taken from that kind of learning to help you moving forward as you start into your second year and hopefully third and fifth and 10th year? (laughs) Oh, I'll be there for me. So my new word, I would like to share my new word. I'm excited. Drum roll. Are you ready? My new word is intentional. I love that. This year is all about being intentional in my actions. I will be thoughtful in what I'm doing. I'm giving myself time to process. I'm not making quick decisions. I'm going to allow myself to think for myself until I feel like I need to bring in another opinion, which will bring me to another subject of other organizers around the country. Okay. I'm going to be intentional about my time. I'm going to be intentional about my shopping when I do it. This last year was really difficult for me to go shopping for like two projects at a time. But this year I I figured out a process about how am I going to shop for two projects at a time when I'm at a store or I'm online. So just being very intentional about my actions. And that goes for anything that I'm going to put my money or my time or my brain into as far as apps, programs, whatever it might be, any sort of groups and that I'm going to give my time to, why am I doing it? And what am I hoping to get out of it? And that I think is very important for anybody looking into resources within the business to figure out why am I doing it and what am I hoping to get from it? And, and knowing that you got to, they need, you need to put the energy and the time into it. Things aren't going to be done for you. It's very I, important. And that's an important thing because I found myself last night scrolling for whatever reason. I don't know if it's the end of the year and everybody's selling a billion things. I was scrolling through Instagram and I kept getting fed all these ads about courses and and education and do this, you know, try this funnel and that, I mean, things that are more relevant to my work at Pro Organizer Studio. And I found myself feeling a little bit of FOMO, like, oh, maybe that's magic. Oh, maybe that's magic. And then I'm like, no, 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 I need to step back. And I love what you said about how would I use this? When would I use it? Am I going to use it? Because there are a million things out there and you can buy you can buy a thousand things. But if you're going to spend that money, then how are you going to use that thing? How are you going to implement it in your business? What are you going to learn from it? And then what gaps does it fill in your knowledge, in your education, whatever that looks like for you? You know, that I am so glad you brought that up. I was thinking about that. I almost want to say social media, newsletters, whatever emails you might be signed up for is like a feeding ground. And you have to be careful. You have to be really careful on what you decide is going to be your magic potion to get your business. Because the energy that you're putting into all of the things could be put into a YouTube SEO tutorial that you could just zip over to your website and make it sound so simple. I wouldn't even know how to do that right now. But you could be putting your time and energy into learning the SEO tricks to get your website more exposure. And I was told at the beginning how important that was. And Who told showed- you that? Just ask. <laughs> this lady, <laughs> this one lady, <laughs> this one lady that wears red glasses. I think it's so easy to get sucked into so many different rabbit holes. So easy. 
and, yes. and to try and avoid those at all cost is really, really important. I think we have to be careful on what advice we throw to newer organizers on how to find their business. What one organizer did at the beginning of her business versus what she's doing right now on year four, or five, or 10 yeah. is going to be so different than that new organizer is going to be doing on, you know, in year one. Yeah. So what happened four years ago is different. And what's happening for that organizer right now is very different. And I, I find this trap of newer organizers feeling like they have to depend on third party people to get them their business. Mm -hmm oh, I need to go visit this real estate office. I need to go visit this real estate agent. Oh, I found this designer and they're going to, it's not, it's that, that really truly is not going to be where you're going to find your clients. First of all, there are so many real estate agents out there and they're all clawing for business, especially right now. In especially market. right now, right? So, I mean, yeah, yeah putting really your bags right in now. a in a basket with with a, an agent that might only have exposure to 10 different people, you aren't most likely going to get business off of that. Now, that isn't to say that it's not somebody you should keep connected with. I think they, you need to change your thinking and that these third party professionals are going to bring you your business. And I just, I just don't think that is where you should put your energy at the beginning of your business. Yeah. Referrals are such a huge part of so many organizers' businesses. But when we say referrals, what we mean is a very happy client refers mm -hmm. you to all their friends. <laughs> I fell into the real estate trap at the beginning too. And one of the reasons we're talking about this is because it, it comes up in the Our Inspired Organizer Facebook group a lot mm -hmm. and newer organizers naturally, because I did it. I thought, oh my gosh, realtors, what is the most natural place? Who's in homes all the time? Oh, it's realtors. Right. And you, by the way, full disclosure, used to be a realtor. I, so I was a realtor. You know, <laughs> you know better than everyone. Yeah. But, you know, it, it seems like it's a natural fit, but it's not in actuality. And does that make sense? Absolutely not. But relying on that or putting all, like you said, all of your eggs in that marketing basket and that networking basket is not going to yield you the client base that you mm -mm. often think it would or should. When you interviewed Corey from Meat and Potatoes recently, she talked about her BNI group, her chamber. And I do think that there is something for putting energy into those smaller groups. In local groups where you're cross, you're cross referring. I know I talked about this recently. My clients, I cannot believe the number of times I am called upon to provide referrals for people like handyman and, you know, all of these things. I know. And so, I mean, I have a handyman that I adore. If you're in the Minneapolis area, hit me up because he's amazing. But it, it, like it really that local referral group, because it's not just one type of people, it's not just one type of business person. It's many different types of business people in a chamber or a BNI group. And so we have a lot of people in our group that are really, really big on in-person local networking. And if that is something that is your jam, absolutely do that. Yes. Yeah, definitely. That was one of my notes I wrote down is being an organizer, you're a resource manager. Yes. And so you need to be that one. Figure out how you can be that person that is that reference person. You're going to get so much more business in yes. the long run being that person than you waiting for somebody to be that for you. And that that's kind of been my mission. I will give you my hot tip on that, too. The reason that I was able to find all the resources that I recommend to people to is also because I said yes to clients who asked me to do things that weren't specifically organizing. So, for instance, I have an amazing painter. He just did the exterior of my house. It looks amazing. I got this painter because I had a client that's like, I don't really like to pick paint colors. Do you like to pick paint colors? I'm like, heck yes, I do. <laughs> I picked all the paint colors for his house and found him a painter. And then I got connected with him. I found the handyman because I had a client that's like, man, I really need a handyman. Do you have someone good? I reached out to my network, found a guy, tried him out on a few things, tried him out on my own home. He's amazing. So sometimes I get these people because I have said, yeah, sure, I'll try that for you, client. And I got paid for something that is Organizing adjacent, I call it, <laughs> but yes. it really helps improve my business too. It makes me a resource to my clients also. Being resourceful is a great tool to have in your pocket. 
Yeah. I always say too, that that resourcefulness, I think translates also into the in-home experience. I pride myself on being able to pick something weird up and have the client go, what is that? And then I'm like, oh, I know what that is. It's the screw to the blah, blah, blah yeah. that we organized in this room the other day. So I love doing yeah. that. It's so amazing how the inventory that I have in my brain of my clients' yes. homes. Totally. Like, kind of scary. <laughs> Or I did a kitchen recently and the the guy was like, what, what is that even? Like he had a bunch of stuff that he didn't know what it was. I'm like, it's an apple corer. And he's like, well, what would I use that for? I'm like, do you plan on making a lot of apple pies from scratch? If no, then we can say goodbye to this. <laughs> so right. I, I feel like we might have gotten a little bit off track and I want to make yes, sure I don't forget. Sorry. Tell me, no, you don't have to apologize. <laughs> that, it's that's my common fault. with me. You know that. Listen, I love it. I can go all different directions. But so if you could go back to a year ago at this time what I mean I think you've gone over a little bit like <laughs> what would you say hey girl don't do this I know right okay so first of all don't assume you know what you like to do as far as organizing oh I like this yes oh so, talk to us about this I know you have to in my first podcast a year ago I was all about garages and shops. Yes. And I, I do. I really still love them in my own property, not somebody else's <laughs> property. Yeah. Going through somebody else's garage stuff is really draining. It's very draining. It's very physical. And it's not what I thought I was going to enjoy. What I enjoy, I love pantries and laundry rooms, <laughs> Airbnbs all day long. My top three. Those are my top three. And I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, so don't assume at the beginning, do not assume, do not limit yourself. Don't limit yourself to what you think you want to organize or who you want to organize for. I really think it's important to give yourself an opportunity to test the waters in lots of areas. I think Number this one. goes back to what we were talking about earlier in terms of you've got to try a few things out and mm -hmm. you can determine for yourself what works and what doesn't, because you might surprise yourself either direction, whether it's, hey, I love doing this. By the way, I love garages, but you have to figure out for yourself what you want to say yes or no to going forward. I think that also empowers you to be able to love your job even more. Yes. It reminds you that I'm in this because I'm doing something I love. So when we work in a corporate atmosphere or we work for somebody else, we are we continually have to do things we don't want to do. And it gets us into this place of I'm so unhappy. I don't like my job. When you work for yourself and you're an organizer, you can go in and do a job you don't like, but guess what? You get to not ever go back and do that if you choose not to. Yeah. And I love that. I think that is fantastic. I love being able to pick and choose what works for me. And even if it's something that, you know, I don't love doing X, Y, Z, I also know I only have to do it for five more hours and then I'm done. I don't have to do it for infinity. Mm -hmm. Like I don't, mm -hmm. I, I don't have to be here for, you know, two more years. But I also, I love what you're saying about, you can say, this works for me. This doesn't work for me. Or you could say, it doesn't work for me for the next three months, but it might work for me again in the summer. I don't know. You get to change the right. rules as much as you want to. Yeah, absolutely. And that's going to help you along with your processes. What do you, like, what has surprised you about yourself like in terms of like organizing in someone's house what has surprised you this year I think what has surprised me is how at least for me my clients it they become friend is a strong word it's a different relationship yeah. I mean you are in these people's business and it has just surprised me at how important I have become in their life yep and it's an, it's really an honor and how I've impacted children, children at very young ages that ask if Miss Kim is going to come and do my room. Yeah. Is Miss Kim going to come put my stuffed animals in a pretty row? You know, yeah. that is, that has surprised me honestly the most at what we mean to people. It's not just about getting their functional systems. It's about peace of mind and, and what that means to them. And the amount of trust that people place in you. I mean, it's kind of yeah. amazing when you think about it. It's like your house is yes. your most valuable resource. And people just open their houses for us and, and all of to the things in through. their house. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. All kinds of surprises. 
Yes. But it's fine. <laughs> it adds an element of excitement to the it job. Does. <laughs> it really does. Uh, yeah. Okay. So you said earlier that your word of the year is intentional. What else, yes. what does the landscape of 2023 look like for you? The landscape of 2023 is being very intentional with my time. So I am going to be a little more thoughtful in when I'm scheduling, which days and which times. I'm going to be a little bit more thoughtful in my shopping days and times. I'm going to try and do more online versus in person. That first year it was really great to get hands on, see things, understand things, touch and feel and all of that. And now it's become a little bit more about measurements. And I think that is really great. Next in line after in-home organizing is going to be workshops for me. Okay. I did my more. First, yeah. I did my first workshop in October and it was a huge success. I had an amazing turnout. It was exhilarating. And I absolutely loved it. So I will be doing quarterly workshops this year to be able to get into the community a little bit more personal so that those that cannot or don't want to invest into my services in home can still connect with me, email me, go back and forth after they've been to one of my workshops to troubleshoot any areas that they have in their home. You know, it's not going to be in-depth DIY plans, but just as a resource to yeah. them to come to me if they so choose. Yeah. I love that. Just a quick word on workshops too. Just a little plug. I have done a bunch of seminars at, or workshops at local libraries and you get paid for it. Libraries actually have budgets. So if you go to the library event coordinator and be like, hey, I'm a professional organizer. I'd love to talk to people about blah, 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 blah. You might be surprised. You can get paid pretty decently to do a little workshop. I love talking to people. So it makes me really happy. But I love yeah. your local workshop idea too. It's awesome. Yeah, definitely those. And I had somebody reach out to me and ask if I would do a workshop in their home. Yeah. To their, their friends. Like a Tupperware so party. Like only organizing. Kind of like a Tupperware party for organizing. So I'm wrapping my head around that and trying to figure out the logistics in that. So that's just another avenue that I want to take my job. And when I hurt my leg recently, it made me realize that I, I need to have maybe a little something else yeah. <laughs> to fall back on other than my legs. I We might need to do a whole like separate episode on workshops and things like that, because I really believe in them. They are really good and you can get paid for them. And there are lots of different ideas like doing one in someone's home for a mom's group, for instance. And then you get exposure to a bunch of moms in one place that then all want to hire you. I have done them for a few groups around Minnesota, just done a Zoom presentation, and then it turns into business. So there, I think there are lots of really great workshop ideas that are out there. Yeah, I think so, and I found a lot of my, my workshop attendees were not social media followers, but then yeah. became social media followers, but said that they really enjoyed following me. So yeah. that is where I finally came to my, what I figured out social media was for me. It was an extension. It was an extension to my local community. I love that. Do you have any big goals for 2023 that you want to reach? Or are you just letting well, I it? Have fine. No, I'm not letting it roll. I have financial goals that I want to reach. And I have narrowed those down to weekly goals, hourly goals, and how I'm going to achieve those. And that's a big one. That puts a lot of weight on my shoulders, but if I'm intentional about my actions, I wasted quite a bit of time in 2022 chasing my own tail, but 2023 is, is going to be, is going to be different for sure. Well, you've got it locked in. And then the other thing that you can do is say like, okay, once you back into what, you know, you say, this is what I need. Then you back into it. Then you can say, oh, I need to pump the brakes a little bit, or I need to press the gas. And it allows you to figure out, you know, if you know your numbers, there's no mystery to it, right? It's just yeah. a number is just a piece of data and it's not about your self-worth or anything else, but it helps you guide what are my efforts going to look like. Yeah, I'm definitely going to spend more time out in 2023 in front of people introducing myself. And I, I'm excited for that. That's what excites me. I pretty much this last month started training back all the fat yeah. and discontinuing a lot of apps that I had, a lot of yep. programs that I had. I even got rid of, you're all going to think I'm nuts, but I'm not even doing QuickBooks. 
Okay. I'm using my good old notepad. That's there you go. That's how my how my brain works, and I'm really happy with all my decisions and where I'm at. Dubsado is still going to stay on my plate because I've invested so much money, yep. and I figured out enough that it would be difficult for me to go backwards yep. and not have those those things. But um, but you learned how I'm to use it in the right way. I I can maneuver slightly. I can make an invoice. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I was trying to give you a little bit of extra credit. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. But I do have a handful of organizers that I have reached out to where they're ready to jump in and just kind of help me with some Love um, pain points that I have. So that is, that's good. I'm not willing to spend any more money on it. Yeah. So I just, I love it. Well, you said you have a daughter who's a sophomore in college. You're a sophomore in your business now. So you're ready to go. I am. Yes. I Freshman am. year yes. is over. I, I do want to give a shout out to all three of my girls. They all are so patient with me and my needs. They still don't help me very much, but they're so patient with me. Well, and I, I just want to, just a quick reminder, you know, my oldest one is a finance major, University of Georgia. She came over to try and help me and gave up. Courtney, my middle daughter is, she's a social media manager for a big social media firm in New York City. And I get zero. I get a good job, mom. You grew up 20 followers. And then Caitlin is my gifted writer. She actually just got props from her college professor that she truly is a gifted writer. She, she is going into get her teaching degree for special education, but I get no help in newsletters or blogs. So I have three amazing girls that really, truly do not help me. My biggest helper is my Chad. He's great. Yes. My shelf finger. He's, he's been awesome. So that's another thing people need is their support system. Find your cheerleaders and stick with them. Yep. And I know we've talked about, you know, social media isn't, isn't the, the be all end all, but I will say you did have a very funny reel recently with your daughter. So <laughs> I like, I'm not going to spoil yes, it. Just go look at it. It's hilarious. <laughs> He threw me a bone yeah. <laughs> and that wasn't even the social media daughter. That was the the writing daughter. Right. I know. <laughs> I love it. So no, it is all joking aside, even though, you know, you have these very talented daughters who might not, you know, give you daily help on your business. It is like to have people behind you who believe in you. And one of the things I have said about my husband is like, he believes in me more than I believe in myself sometimes. And so yeah. being able to find those people, it might not be your family. Cause I know sometimes families can also be a little bit challenging or questioning, but finding whomever that is that has your back and believes in you and can prop you up when you're having those bad days and take you out for a beer and tell you not to quit your business just because you had one bad day, whatever that looks like for you. Those are good people to have. Well, your podcast, the one we did a year ago, was one of our most downloaded episodes. And so I people just loved it. I think they're going to love this one too. So what you have to put on your calendar is I'm going to be checking in with you again. You're going to be oh, that's great back on in 365 days so we can hear about your sophomore I, year of organizing. I love it. So if anybody goes back to listen to my first one, um, I, I want to touch on a couple things. Yeah. I don't want to do shops. <laughs> yeah. Even though I said, and our shop still isn't completed. Mueller Construction is way behind me still. I did have t-shirts made. Yes. They do not have crass sayings on the back. They just say, you don't need that. Oh, and I forgot I about you, that. Yes. I always wear it to places like TJ Maxx, Marshalls, Target. I have more people comment on my t-shirts that say, I don't need that. And they, I'll hear somebody go, you're right. I don't. And I'll turn around like, what are you talking about? I and love that. T-shirt. I get so many conversations on my t-shirts. Yes. Love that. We may have to add that. I may have to give you a yeah. commission and we'll have to add that to the, <laughs> to the pro organizer studio yeah. shirt shop. <laughs> yeah. You don't need that period. <laughs> it's true, man. I, I, there are so many, so many houses I go in because by the way, I used to be this person like Amazon packages on the doorstep 200 times a day and you don't need it. You really don't. Yeah. It's really yes. stressful. Okay. Where can people find you? Rustichomeorganizing.com. I know that one. Yes. Or rhorganizing.com either gets you there. Instagram is rustic underscore home underscore organizing. And then Facebook is just Rustic Home Organizing. And I'm and always happy to answer direct messages. I love it. I just had somebody yesterday listen to the podcast from a year ago and reach out and say hi. I just love it. I think it's great. 
Kim is a giver, you guys. Like, for real, I'm not just saying this. She loves talking to people because she loved reaching out to people, and she knows how important it is that, you know, you pay it forward in terms of helping people. So she really loves to hear from people genuinely, and I love that. And I will say, check out her website because it is gorgeous. It's so – it's genuinely – I often send it to people looking for website inspiration. So check Kim out. Reach out to her. Say hi. Tell her you listen to all of her podcasts. She'll be on the podcast 55 five more times before she retires. So, all right. Thank you so much, friend. Thank you so much, Kim, for joining us. I absolutely love talking to her. It's funny. I always say that I love talking to people on this podcast. I do. I could talk to people for hours and hours and someday I'll just do an outtakes episode because um, sometimes we have a lot of conversations that don't end up making the podcast, but I just, I love doing this and I appreciate so much that there are so many of you that listen and it really warms my heart whenever someone sends an email or DMs me on Instagram is like, oh, I love the podcast. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you as always for listening to us on the Pro Organizer Studio podcast. I just want to throw this in. If you have not joined our free workshop, the Pro Organizers Profit Plan. I would love to spend another hour with you. It's available 24-7, 365 at poroadmap.com. Have an absolutely amazing week, organizers, and I'll talk to you next week. Thank you so much for listening in to the Pro Organizer Studio podcast. If you'd like to get our roadmap for success as a pro organizer, head straight to www.poroadmap.com.